Wait. Yeah. Do you see the uh, red uh, dot there? Yeah, yeah. On the screen. On the screen, on the screen yeah? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Good. All right. So, um, how much oil do you think you need for deeper work? Less yeah. or more? Less. less. Definitely less. Because the more you have, the more gliding you have, okay? So, yeah, let's, let's continue by having some technique on the shoulders, okay? Um, can I have a chair, please? Someone? Good. I'll go around here. Okay. So, first of all, um, I'll show you some technique that you can do on the shoulder. Now, the shoulder are different because they're quite low. On the back, you usually come this way, yeah? But the shoulder, you need to come from that way. So, it's a lot easier. It's a lot harder. Remember this technique? Mm -hmm. So, why don't we take some techniques to sitting, yeah? And you're coming to one, one side of it. Now, sitting is pretty much the same as standing with your legs. So one leg backward, one leg forward. You're coming from the side, and again, you're kind of leaning onto it. So you're actually perching on the edge of the chair. Okay. Mm. You kind of push, push with this leg. And that's it, actually. So again, a lot of leaning. I'm feeling that I'm kind of leaning onto it. Yeah. Is there movement in there as well. Yeah, so like there is slight like movement. On the back, but, yeah. Right. So this is with chair. Two variations without chair. So you need to quite launch, quite lot in here. Why? Because if you're coming from above, you're actually squashing the neck. Do you see why? Yeah? If you want to come maybe to the other side, you will see a lot better. If I'm coming from here, I'm just squashing the neck down. So I need to come with that direction. Yeah? Good. The next variation is leaning. Yeah? Uh, sorry, kneeling. Again, I try not to have my body um, directed another way, but the four points all the time to the direction of the application. Good. So once here, I usually like to come to connect it with something else, either scapular or another technique maybe just effleurage backward, yeah, to make it rounded, yeah? And you really want to actually work on the upper trapezius, but also depress the shoulders. If it's too much for them, instead of working with your bone, you can pronate your hand a little bit, yeah? And make it a bit more softer for them. So you're working with this area rather than with the bone. Now, I'm not gonna show you uh, the two hands, because a lot of the problem, it becomes kind of a breastfeeding exercise, you know, when you, know, when you do that. What? So, yeah, so um, try to do that with proportion, with proportion, okay? So if you cannot do, do one at a side, one time at a, at one side at a time. So come on to the other side, and then do it from here, okay? Now here, I can continue with that movement, yeah? So I can do that this way. And when you finish, you can kind of take it backward even to here. And again, so actually you do it, we do one deep tissue, and then taking it here, and do the, remember we did the effleurage to the side? Variation always would come and you could kind of take it as it goes, okay. So, um, more techniques. You can work around the scapula quite well with this technique, okay? So, you have, if this is the scapula, which muscle come from the scapula to the spine? Rhomboids. Rhomboids, good. 
and erectus spiny. Which, move, which muscle come from above the scapula? Levator, Levator scapula and trapezius. trapezius. And which are the muscles on the lateral of the scapula? Latissimus dorsi. Deltoid are more here. Latissimus dorsi and teres major and teres minor. Okay? So what you can do is work out on the lateral muscles together with the medial, yeah? Or just the lateral, yeah? So this is the, this is the scapula, so you're working from the scapula this way. It's just a nice broader area. So this is quite similar to effleurage, isn't it? Or, deeper. Yeah, but, but deeper, yeah? yeah? Good. And then you can work on this side and that side. This is like figure of eight or alternating hands. Okay. When it comes to the neck itself, I kind of avoid working with my forearms. What's the reason for that, do you think? Delicate areas. Yeah. It's a small, delicate area. I want to palpate better, so I would leave it, really. But when it comes to the upper back, very nice. And what I can do, I can work with the forearm. Now, not this way, but parallel to the erector spiny, and once I feel ready, I can do, maybe you can come around from this side, yeah, come around, you might see better. I just change the technique by just increasing the angle here and work deeper. Is it deep enough? And then ease off. So when I work with the forearm, it's not as intensive, and then slowly I increase the movement. I increase the flexion, and then slowly bring it back, again finding another area. Would that be a good thing for like knots as well, like almost exactly. a compression? Yeah. If you have very strong knots in here, Yes, you can really lean. And what do you see here? I lean with the two hands. You know, be careful not to slip. Try to be not to slip. So, yeah. if you feel that you're not stable, what I will do is just put another hand here. Mm. It's like the snooker <laughs> effect, you know? You don't hit the snooker post this way, but you always have, I don't know how they do it, this way or that way, but okay this way, so it's stable. So you're putting another hand here, and then you stabilize that. Now, are you going to run your elbow up and down the avenue? No, because that's where, that's where people associate deep tissue with something painful and aggravating, actually. So if anything, don't do it. Slowly, it's quite deep, it's, it's deep enough. Okay, so again, Sitting, you know, this position, standing, leaning, yeah, and then working around the scapula on the lateral side, yeah, on the lateral and medial side together. Oh, where is uh, some, I owe someone the, the bolster technique for the shoulder. Fantastic. Oh, said, yeah. Yes, can I have two? Sh this is exactly the time. Can I have two, two um, uh, towels? Please, two towels. The, the two blues one, yes? Okay, now here it is. This is where uh, it's nice to work with um, bolsters while you're massaging. So imagine you have a client, the typical client comes with a protracted shoulder. Yeah, protrum, and you want to do that. Yeah, you want to make the shoulders go back, but you don't want to force it. So in your clinic, you should have lots of these towels. Yeah, and what you're doing is basically, can I put this underneath? Yeah, okay, good. 
Of course, neater, nicer, but... Are those towers a bit big for it? Or is it's too big? big. The towers are a bit should too big like for that. A, small tower? Uh, a little bit smaller, but it should be enough to push the, the shoulder backward. Yes? The other tower? Yeah, good. Now, can you see when you just leave them for an hour, they will come happily back to you? Mm -hmm. Because you stretch the pectoralis muscles and give the muscles in the back a bit more rest. Now, working with the forearms is actually even nicer. Do you see how easy it is to kind of, you see how smooth this muscle here? Yeah, good. And then you can nicely put your, it's almost like increasing the springiness of the, of the spine there. Not on the neck. Never do it on the neck because it's very vulnerable, yeah? Only upper back. And so would you leave the towels there for the whole treatment? I would say 10 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah? Okay. yeah? Sure. And then you're turning. When you're turning, you have to take them up, yeah. otherwise they will come even worse, yeah? <laughs> okay, lower back, pretty much the same thing, you know? You can do on the um, quadratus lumbarum here. Glute will work after, okay? And that. So, should we give it a try and try this? So try one shoulder with draping, with the towel rolled, see the effect of it, okay? And work with it. Cool. Cool. Fantastic. Let's